In this two-part Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this ball tube slide satisfying looping animation. So this will be a two-part tutorial. So in this part, in part one, we're gonna be setting up the entire scene. And then in part two, we'll be doing all of the animation. And so by the end of the series, you'll learn how to create this exact animation right here. If you enjoy these tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then a great way to do that is by purchasing the finished project files. And you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, and also the Blender Market. The links will be in the description. And also joining my Patreon page is a really great way to help support this channel monthly. And after this tutorial series, you can also check Check out my Blender Looping Animations tutorial playlist to learn how to create more looping animations. Now just one more thing before we continue with the video, I wanted to let you know about a really great render farm service for Blender. Blender Grid is an easy to use render farm specifically designed for Blender. I've used the service and I highly recommend it. Upload your Blender file or a zip file with the blend file and textures. You can change the render settings on the website before rendering. Blender Grid will let you know the cost before you start the render. You can even choose when you want the render to finish if you're on a tight deadline. While it renders, you can check the rendered frames to make sure everything is rendering properly. Once it finishes, just download the files and compile the frames in a video editor. Use the link in the description to get $20 of render credit on your first render. Now I will be using a few different free resources online, and I'll have the links in the description to all the resources, or if you purchase the project files of this tutorial, then you'll also get all the resources. So the first one is this HDRI from polyhaven.com. This is the artist workshop. We'll be adding this into the background to get some realistic lighting, and I'll be downloading the 1K version and the HDRI version. Then on freesound.org, I'm going to be downloading this fan industrial old sound effect, and we'll be adding this into the 3D scene to kind of add a nice sound effect of the middle part rotating. Also on freesound.org, I'll be downloading this tennis ball sound effect, and we'll be using this to make the little sound effects of the balls dropping. And so in the video editor, we'll be cutting up the little sounds of the balls dropping and putting them in the video editing to actually make the sound effect of the balls falling down through the tube. And then I'm also going to be using my procedural wood material. So I'll be using my procedural wood three material. And so I am selling these as a product. So you can purchase them if you'd like to, or you can also watch the tutorial and you can learn how to create them yourself. And specifically, I'm going to be using this wood three material. And then also on the metal objects, I'm going to be adding my procedural rough metal material. So again, you can purchase this material on my Gumroad store if you'd like to, or you can watch the tutorial and learn how to create this procedural metal material. And again, if you purchase the project files of this tutorial, you'll also get access to the different resources that I'll be using, or you can purchase them here or watch the tutorial. All right, so here we are in a new scene in Blender, and I have my screencast keys right down here so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm just gonna select everything. I'll hit X, and then we'll just click on delete. And I'm gonna add that circle object, which is gonna be made out of wood. So I'll go to the add menu, let's go to mesh, and I'm gonna add a cube. Now I'm gonna hit tab to go to edit mode and I'm gonna scale this up and I will type two and then enter. And then I can press the F key to fill a face there. And I'll go back to object mode. Now why I'm scaling this up much larger is because we're gonna be using rigid body physics to actually make the ball animation. And rigid body physics really doesn't work well for very small objects. So if I were modeling this to the real life scale in Blender, I might wanna scale these objects way down. But I find rigid body physics really don't work that well if the objects are too small. So I will be modeling this scene pretty large. So let's go back into edit mode and I'm gonna hit the E key to extrude and we'll bring it up on the z-axis and I'll just bring it up a little bit then we'll hit the x key we're just going to delete the faces and then I'll hold down the alt key and I'll alt select that loop of vertices there and I'll hit e to extrude and then we'll hit s to scale we're going to scale that up a little bit just to kind of make that little lip piece and then we'll extrude everything down on the z-axis and bring it down kind of like that and then I'll just fill that by pressing the f key to fill a face there and then it looks like we might need to recalculate the normals so select everything and you can press shift n to recalculate the normals. All right, so now what I wanna do is make that little hole in the center where the balls can fall through. So I'll click here to go to the face select. I'm gonna select this face and then shift and select this face and I'll hit the I key to inset those faces and I'll make them about that big. And then I'll press seven on the numpad to go to top view. I'll hold down the Z button and move my mouse into the wireframe. You can see that they are not the same size. So what I need to do is just select this top one here. 
I'll press seven again for top view, and I'll just scale this up until they are the same size. And I'll hold down the Z button, go back to solid view. Now, if you wanna scale them up and down together, you can hold down the shift key and select both of them. But if you scale it, you can see they're also gonna be scaled down on the Z axis. So what you can do is hit S to scale, and then you can hit shift Z. Shift Z will exclude the Z axis, and you can just make that the scale that you want. I'll then hit G to grab, and I'll bring it over on the X axis, and I'm gonna put it right over here. So just stick it right about there, because I want that part to be rotating so the balls will come down here they'll rotate around and then they'll fall through right there all right s to scale shift z make that a bit smaller and then we want to delete these and just fill it so there's a hole there so i'll hit x to delete we'll delete the faces then I want to click here to go to the vertex select and I'll hold down the alt key and the shift key and we're going to select both of those loops. Then I can press control E which will bring up these settings here and I'm going to choose the bridge edge loops. This way it'll fill all the faces in there so now we have a nice hole right there in the wood piece. And if you haven't saved the project already, click on file and save and just save your project. And then as you're working on the project, just press Control S just to save it. So now let's add some modifiers to the objects. So I'm gonna go over here to the modifier properties. Let's click on add modifier. I'll go to the search. And I first wanna add a bevel modifier to bevel the edges. And let's turn the segments up to like a three and we can drag this amount down to make it very small. And then use the object context menu and we're gonna shade that smooth. Now you can see right here, you can kind of see the geometry. So I'm also gonna add modifier. We're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier. And here on the render and viewport, we're just gonna turn those to one. So now we have a much smoother object. Also, I might go back into edit mode and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, select that loop there, and then hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that loop there. And I might make it a bit thinner by just bringing up the bottom, just bring the bottom up kind of to about there so it's a bit more thin. All right, that is pretty good. So now I wanna add a camera. And why I'm adding a camera this early into the video is so that I make sure I get the sizes correct of the objects. And also I wanna make sure I get the objects in the frame. So I'll go to the Add menu. We can go down here to Camera and just add a camera. And then you can move your view to wherever you want the camera to be and then hit Control alt numpad 0 Control alt numpad 0 will bring the camera to where we are and also we can click right here on the output properties and we can make this a square image you don't have to make it a square image but i'm going to so on the resolution here the x and y i'll turn this to 1920 and also 1920 so it is now square and then if you click in the corner you can select the camera i'll hit g to grab and i can move the camera around i can also hit g to grab and then tap the z key twice to bring the camera in and out and also with the camera selected I'll go here to the object data properties of the camera and I will turn this focal length up to like an 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit and make things look a bit more flat so I'm gonna go with something like that that's pretty good maybe bring the camera out just a little bit farther so there's a bit more space so now let's model that centerpiece which is gonna rotate so I will press shift C to make sure that the 3d cursor here is in the center of the scene I can then go to the add menu let's go to mesh and I'll add a cylinder and then I'll press the period on the the numpad to zoom into the cylinder. Let's go into edit mode and I'm going to scale the object way down. So I'll bring it down maybe to just that big. I can also click here on the face select. I'll select this face and I will delete just the faces. Select this face and delete just the faces. I can then select everything and I'll scale everything up on the z-axis and I'll scale it way up so that it is much longer. All right, that's pretty good. Maybe bring it down just a little bit more, but I do want this to be quite long. Then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate the entire mesh, and then I will hit the Escape key to bring it back to the, where it was. Let's now scale everything down on the Z axis and just bring it way down. Then we can scale everything up a little bit and then scale it down a little bit and bring it up. And I'm just gonna add kind of a little metal detail here. So we'll just bring that down, kind of like that. And then let's also go here to the Vertex Select. I'll Alt select that loop of vertices there, press the F key to fill a face. Hold down the Alt key, select that loop of vertices there, and press the F key to fill a face. And then to select just this little piece here, you can deselect everything and press the L key with your mouse hovered over that piece. I might scale it down a little bit, scale it down the Z axis, and maybe bring it up a little bit. Let's go into the camera view by hitting the zero on the numpad. I think I'll scale it up a little bit and bring it up a little bit, something like that. So just modeling kind of a cool piece there. And then I'll duplicate it with Shift D, bring it down on the Z axis, and I'll put another piece about there. All right, let's go back to object mode. And then I can go here to the modifiers. We'll click on add modifier and I can add a bevel modifier and we'll turn these segments up 
to about a 3, and I can drag this amount down to make it very small, and then I'll use the object context menu and just shade that smooth. So now let's go back into edit mode of this object, and again press Shift C to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center. I'll now go to the add menu, and we're going to add a cube in edit mode. So we can now scale the cube way down. Let's zoom into the cube, and I can scale the cube up on the x-axis, and this is going to be kind of those wing pieces which are going to push the balls around. Also scale this down on the y-axis, kind of like that. Just make it pretty thin, and then scale it up on the z-axis and kind of bring it up here, and just stick it like that. Maybe bring it down just a little bit more. I think that's a little bit too high, so scale it down and just bring it down a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. So now what I can do is click here to go to the vertex select actually the edge select. I'll select this edge, let's go over here and then shift select this edge, and I want to add a little bevel here. So I will press control B, and you can move your mouse out to add that bevel, but then you can scroll with your mouse wheel to add more cuts to the bevel to make it smooth, and I'll just make a bunch of cuts, click it there just to place that. So now it has kind of a nice round edge there, and that looks pretty good. All right, let's go back to object mode, use the object context menu again, and just shade that smooth. So we can now model the tube pieces. So to model the tube I'll go to the add menu. We're going to go to curve and I'll add the BZA curve. Let's move the curve over up here so I can just see it. And then let's click here to go to the object data properties to go to the curve settings. Let's open up the geometry and then we're going to go to the bevel here. And on this depth, I'm going to turn up the bevel depth and that'll make it more thick. All right, now I also want the resolution to be bigger because you can see the resolution isn't quite that good. So here on the resolution, I'll turn this up to like an 18 so that there's more resolution. And then also up here on the resolution here, this top one, the resolution preview, we'll turn this to an 18 as well. So that'll add resolution going back and forth, whereas this resolution here will add resolution around the sides. All right. So now let's go into edit mode. Actually, let's go back to object mode and I'll bring the object down here, kind of stick it about here roughly where I want it. And then I can go to edit mode. So I can now select the handles and I can rotate the handles and move them around. We're gonna move these handles around in edit mode and I'm gonna place this first one right up here and I can also scale it up a little bit. And I'm gonna stick this here right in the center of the hole so the balls can fall through and then go through the tunnel or the tube. So stick it right there. And then if the size isn't big enough, you can just drag this depth up to make it bigger and just make it fit the size of it. You can make it be a little bit bigger than the actual hole. And then just kind of move that uh, curve handle around just to fit it to where you want. Let's then select this curve handle here and I can hit G to grab and move it over. Also rotate it on the Z axis, kind of rotate that over. And I can scale it up a little bit. And I do want to make sure that these aren't going through. So you can see that this one's actually going through that piece a little bit. So I might want to just move this over a little bit and also maybe turn the depth down. Just make the depth a little bit smaller and just make sure it's not really going through that object. And if it's still not aligning up, if it's still not working correctly, if it's too big, then what you can do is go back to object mode select this object here and go into edit mode. You can go to the face select and then hold down the alt key and select that loop of faces around there. And then you can hit S to scale and then you can hit shift Z again to exclude the Z axis and just make it a bit smaller. And let's also bring it back on the X axis so it's kind of more here in the corner. That's pretty good, go back to object mode and then select this piece again here and go back into edit mode. So now you can move the curve around and just kind of fit it to the shape. And then also because we made the circle there smaller or the hole smaller, we can turn this depth down just to make it the right size. And it might even be helpful to go to top view and then go into wireframe view and just kind of move that around until it fits the correct shape. So I can even make the depth a little bit smaller and kind of move it right in there. All right, so that is pretty good. All right, we'll select this piece here and we'll move this over. And then we can also rotate it down. Let's hit the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view. That's looking pretty good. So I'll now hit E to extrude. We're going to extrude out the curve handle and just make it much longer and just kind of have it go out of the scene. But we don't need to go out of the scene too far. We just want to make it go out of the camera view. So something like that is good. All right, so then the balls will fall down here. They'll rotate around. They'll go through the tunnel and then those kind of fall out of the scene right there. All right, so that's pretty good. 
just go into the camera view and make sure that's looking good. You can kind of rotate it if you need to, uh, but that was looking pretty good. So we're gonna go back to object mode. I'll save this again with Control S, and then I'll press Shift D to duplicate. We'll just duplicate this object and move it up here. And we can now add the second one. So for this second one here, I want the depth to be much smaller. So we'll drag this down to maybe roughly half the size or maybe not quite that small, but just make it a bit more thin. I can also rotate this object on the X axis and we'll rotate it around. And we can go into edit mode and I'm going to select this handle here and rotate the handle over and just kind of stick it right here. So the spheres are going to come down and then they're just going to land right here in the wooden piece. All right, so just kind of place that there. And then also if you want to flatten it, if you don't want it to curve at all, you can hit S to scale and then you can scale everything on the Y axis and you can type zero and then enter just to kind of flatten it. And then you can just kind of move it over there and go into the camera view with the zero on the numpad and maybe bring it down a little bit on the Z axis. So something like that, and maybe turn the depth down a little bit so it's a little bit smaller. So just kind of fit it right there. And then you can select the curve handles and you can make them smaller and kind of bring them down a little bit. All right, something like that. And then this piece here, I wanna rotate the piece and move it up. And let's also rotate it sideways and we wanna rotate it so it's going fully up. Maybe scale that down a little bit. And then again, you can press the A key to select all the handles and you can scale them. You can scale them on the Y axis and then type zero and enter just to kind of flatten them. Kind of move them over there. All right, so that is looking pretty good. That's pretty much the shape that I want and that's the location that I want. All right, let's press Control S again to save this. And one more thing, I think the bevel depth could just be a little bit bigger. I think those uh, tubes there could be a little bit more thick. All right, so that's pretty good. So now what I wanna do is convert these objects to mesh objects. So make sure that you've modeled them to the correct rotation and placement that you want, because once you convert them to mesh objects, it'll be harder to edit them. So hold down the shift key, select both of the tubes. You can press control A, and then what you can do is click on visual geometry to mesh. So now if I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see they're not a curve anymore. So let's just select the top tube and we'll hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to click here to go to the vertex select. Let's hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there. And I'll press shift D to duplicate and then hit S to scale. We'll just scale that up, but I want to make its own object. So we'll hit the P key and we will separate by selection. So it's its own object. We can go back to object mode. We can just select this object and then go into edit mode again. We'll select everything with the A key and we'll scale it down and bring it down on the Z axis. And then we can extrude it up on the Z axis and maybe scale everything up on the Z axis. All right. And then to make it thick, I can hit E to extrude, but then I'll hit S to scale. And then so it doesn't scale it on the Z axis, I'll hit Shift Z. So Shift Z will exclude the Z axis. I'll scale that down and place it there. And then maybe scale the entire thing down just a little bit. All right, so something like that is pretty good. Maybe scale it up on the Z axis just a little. So I can now go back to object mode and let's click here on the modifiers. We'll choose add modifier. And again, we're gonna add a bevel just like we did for the other objects. And I will turn the amount way down so it's very small. And then I'll turn this segments up to like a three. And then I can use the object context menu and shade that smooth. So now I wanna actually do the lighting. So for this scene, if I go here to the render properties, I am going to be using the cycles rendering engine because I wanna get a realistic looking result. However, if your computer doesn't render that fast, if cycles doesn't work well, then you could definitely use Eevee if you want to, but I will be using cycles. So now what I'm gonna do is add in that HDRI to get some realistic lighting. So we'll click here on the world properties and on the yellow dot here next to color, we will click on this. We'll choose environment texture, and then we can click on open to add in the HDRI. And here's the Artist Workshop HDRI that I'll be downloading from polyhaven.com. So the link will be in the description. And on Polyhaven, I chose the 1K version and the HDR version. I will click on open image. All right, I'll hold down the Z button and I'll move my mouse up into the rendered view. So you can see we have some nice lighting there. It just gives some really nice soft lighting to the scene. And then also let's click here on the output properties, actually right up here on the render properties. I get those two mixed up. And what I wanna do is open up the film tab here and I will just check mark the transparent button. And this just makes the background transparent so it's less distracting. And I like that a bit better. And then also here on the color management settings, I'm gonna be using the view transform of filmic and I'll change the look to very high contrast just to make everything more contrasty and saturated and it just makes the scene look a bit nicer. So now I'm going to be adding in the lights. So I'll go to the add menu. 
Let's go here to light and I'm going to add the area light and I'll bring the area light up. I can also rotate the area light on the Y axis. We're going to make one area light kind of here on the side. Let's go to the object data properties to go to the light settings and on the power here, I'm going to turn this up to like a thousand. So it's quite bright. And then here on the shape, I can change this to a rectangle and I can turn up the X size or the Y size. And I want to make this kind of like a long thin light. And why I'm doing this is because it's going to add some really cool reflections to the glass pipe. And it will also add some nice bright lighting there to the actual scene. Then I'll press Shift D to duplicate. We're going to duplicate this light. We can rotate the light around on the Z axis. We're just going to put another light kind of over here. So just like that. So we can now add the materials. So I'm going to be using two different procedural materials that I've created in past tutorials. So if you'd like to purchase those materials, then you can find the links in the description and you can purchase those materials on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, or you can also watch the tutorials and learn how to create them yourself, or you can just add whatever metal material you want. But I'm going to be adding those two procedural materials that I've already created. Now I'm going to be adding them from my asset browser, and this is going to be using my ultimate blender procedural material pack. So right here on the workspaces, I have this assets workspace and right here I have added in my ultimate blender procedural material pack product. If you'd like to check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack product, you can find the links in the description and purchasing is also a great way to help support this channel, but you can see it has all of my procedural materials. And whenever I create 10 more procedural materials, I update the ultimate material pack. So all of my customers can just re download the product files to get the new materials. And I'll be showing you how to append in the materials after I show you how to add them with the asset browser. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view. If you don't have the asset browser right here, then what you can do is you can just split any window. And then here on the editor type, you can click on here to change the editor type and choose the asset browser and then access the ultimate material pack. So I'm going to click here on all. And then here on the search, I'm going to type in wood, or you could also go here to wood um, the wood catalog, and I'm going to be using my wood three material. So I'll just click and drag and then just drop it on there. And this is what I love so much about the asset browser and my ultimate material pack. It's really easy just to drag and drop all of the different procedural materials onto your models. And then if you select the model, you can just go right over here to the material properties and you can see that all of my procedural materials have customizable node groups. So I can easily just change the scale. I can change like this color variation. I could also change the different colors and also like the bump strength and the roughness. So it's really easy to quickly add customizable materials into your scenes. So that's going to be the wood material. And then for the metal material, I'll go here to the search and I'll just start to search for rough and I'll be adding this rough metal material. So I'll just click and drag and I'll just drop the rough material onto this object. All right, so I can now go right back over here to the layout. Now, if you don't have my ultimate Blender procedural material pack and you just want to append in the data, then what you can do to add in these materials is to just click right up here on file and then you can click on append. Then what you can do is you can just locate to the Blender file where you have the procedural material. So for example, you might have followed my tutorial and made the procedural wood, or you might have also purchased it on my Gumroad store or Patreon page. Then what you can do is just go inside the Blender file, then you can go to the materials, and then you can see here's the wood three. You can click on the material and then click on the append button. Then if you select a material and go here to the materials, you can see if I click right here, you can see because I've added it in twice, you can see it says wood three. 3.001. So that's the one that I've just appended in. And then you can do the same thing for the rough metal. So again, you would click on file, you would click on append, then you would locate to the blender file with the procedural material, you would go to the materials folder and just select it. And then you could just click here on the drop down and add in the rough metal. So that is how to add in both of the materials. So now I just want to do a couple of things to adjust the material. So if I click on this object here, I want to make it smaller so I can easily just click on the scale value and type in like 0.5. So it's half the size. So that looks really cool. I think half the size looks pretty good. And you could of course change tons of things like the texture detail. You could also change like the roughness of the metal and you could also change the colors. And that's what's so great about using procedural materials is you can quickly change the look of the material. 
Let's also select the wood material and I want to change a few of the settings. So the scale here, I'll turn to like a 0.6 so that it's a bit smaller. And then I also want to rotate it because I don't want it to look like perfectly even. So you can see right here, the wood grain is moving right towards the camera, but just to make it look a bit more natural, I'm going to rotate it. So right here on the Z, I'm going to rotate this to a value of like a 38 just to kind of rotate it sideways to make it look a bit more natural. And then also this bump strength here, I will turn this down to like a 0 0.05. So this way the actual bump of the material is gonna be much smaller. So just a 0 0.05. And then one more thing, I do want this wood to be kind of like a polished wood. So this roughness here, I'll turn this to like a 0.6 so that it is a more shiny wood. All right, that looks pretty good. I can press Control S to save this again. Now I'm also gonna be creating a glass material. First though, let's select this object here, this little circle piece, and I will click on the drop down, and we'll choose the rough metal. All right, and then I will click on the glass piece here or the pipe. Let's click on new to add a new material and I can just call it like pipe or glass or whatever you want to call it. And then if you click on this piece here, we'll click on the drop down and also choose the pipe material. Now let's click over here to go to the shading workspace. So in the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here and I have the shader editor right over here. I'll hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view so I can see the pipes. And we're gonna be creating a basic glass material for the pipes. So I'm gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the glass shader. I'm also gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the transparent shader. And this principled shader, I can delete it. So we'll select the principled shader. I'll hit the X key to delete it. Now I want to mix the glass and the transparent together. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix shader. So we'll drop the mix shader here. And then this first one here can go into the top one. And then this here, the glass that can go into the bottom one. And then the shader can go into the surface of the material output. Now you may be wondering why I'm not just using the glass shader. Well, if I just drag the BSDF here into the surface, you can see that the glass shader looks like really warped. You can see it looks really warped. It almost looks like a mirror. It's kind of reflecting the HDRI, but I really just don't like how it looks. And one thing that will help the objects to look more realistic is to add a solidify. So I will do that real quick, but I also want to add the transparent here. So let's just open up the side panel here and I'll select the pipe. Let's click here on the modifiers. I'll click on add modifier and we can start to type solidify and I'll add the solidify modifier. So this will just give it a little bit of thickness. If I hold down the Z button and go back to the solid view, you can see it's just giving it a little bit of thickness. And I want to turn this to a pretty small number of like a 0 0.03. So it's just a little bit thick. And then also you can see that right here, there's kind of a weird shading issue. That's because I just need to go into edit mode. I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I'll click here and drag the loop cut up and then click there. So now if I go back into the rendered view, you can see that looks a bit sharper. All right, so that's a bit better. Now, if you hold down the Z button, go into the rendered view and zoom right over here, you can see that the same thing is happening. There's kind of a weird shading issue. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut. I'll click here to add the loop cut and then drag down and just place it somewhere down there. So now in the rendered view, you can see the glass looks a little bit better. And then we'll do the same thing for this object here. So for this object, I will click on the object. I'll click on add modifier and we can search for the solidify modifier just to make it a bit thick. And now you can see the glass does look a bit better. So here on the thickness, I'll turn this down to like a 0 0.03 on the thickness there, just so that it has just a little bit of thickness. But you can see right here, there's a little bit of a shading issue. It kind of looks smooth and a little bit weird. So to fix this, I will go into edit mode. I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I'll left click and drag over to just about there and left click again. So if I now go into the rendered view, you can see it looks nice and sharp there. And then if I navigate way up here and go into edit mode, I need to do the same thing. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut. I can left click and then just kind of drag this up here and left click again. All right, so I'll go back to object mode and you can now see the glass definitely looks better so it doesn't look quite as warped. However, I still don't really like how the glass looks because it just looks a little bit dark. And so what I'm instead gonna be doing is mixing it with the transparent. So let's put the shader into the surface and you can see the glass just looks quite a bit better. I really do like how it looks mixing the transparent. So this factor here is gonna mix between the transparent or the glass. So if I turn the factor to zero, it's fully transparent, so you can't see it. Or if I turn the factor all the way up to one, it's just using the glass. But you can see just by turning it down so it's more transparent, I think the glass just looks a bit nicer. So here on this factor value, I'll turn this to like a 0.32, just so that it's a bit more transparent. 
And then also make sure the roughness value is zero because I want it to be not rough at all. I want it to be shiny. And also this color here, make sure this is fully white. And on the transparent here, make sure this is fully white. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's go back here to the layout and I can press Control S to save the project. Now there's just a few more things that I wanna do. One thing that I wanna do is add a background. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's go to mesh and I'm gonna add a plane and I will go here to the side view. We can go back into solid view and I'm gonna bring this plane pretty far back and then I can rotate the plane and we will scale the plane up. All right, so just something like that. And if I go into the camera view again, I just wanna bring the plane down and then I can double tap the R key, which will enable the trackball rotation. And we're just gonna rotate the plane around so that it's kind of facing the camera. Let's hold down the Z button and go back up into the rendered view to see how the plane is looking. And I wanna make the plane darker. So let's go to the materials. I can click on new to add a new material. And I can just rename the material to like background. And then here on the base color, I can make this like a really dark gray color. So just something like that. There's just kind of a nice background, but it's not really too distracting. So something like that is pretty nice. And also if you're using the cycles rendering engine and if you're in the camera view, you can press control B and then you can drag a box around the camera and let go. And this will add a camera boundary. So it will only render what you can see in the camera view. And that's just a bit nicer and it kind of speeds up the preview. And you can especially see now how the glass is looking. So I really do like mixing the glass with the transparency. It just looks quite a bit nicer. It kind of makes it look like a thin plastic instead of a glass. All right, so just a few more things we're gonna do to finish up this scene before we finish this part. I'm gonna select this wood piece. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and I can bring it down on the Z axis, and I'll stick it somewhere down here. And then I can rotate it on the Z axis, and I'll just rotate it around kind of like that. And then you can scale it up a bit so you can't really see that hole there. I'm just rotating it so that you can't see the hole there, and I'll scale it up a bit. Maybe even bring it down a little bit farther. And then another thing that I wanna do is go back to solid view. And I want to add like a few support beams because it'll just look a bit more supported and look more realistic if there are kind of some metal beams here. So I'll go to the add menu and I can go here and add a cylinder and I will just use the object context menu and we're going to choose the shade auto smooth so that it's shaded smooth but then the edges here are sharp. So let's hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I can scale this way down and we're going to make it about the size of the other sphere or the other cylinder there. And we'll also scale it up on the Z axis and make it quite a bit longer. Maybe scale it down so it's a little bit more thin. So something like that. And then what I can do is scale this down a bit more and bring it down on the Z axis. And we're going to just stick it right down here. So it goes into the bottom of that wooden piece there. All right. So just something like that, maybe make it a bit more thin. So I can now just go into the camera view and make sure that goes out of the scene. So that is good. So I'll now hit the seven on the numpad to go to top view and I will hold down the Z button and I'll go to the wireframe view and then I can hit a G to grab and I want to move this piece over and maybe stick one there. And then I'll press shift D to duplicate. We're going to stick another one about there. Shift D to duplicate, we'll stick one there, and then Shift D to duplicate, and we'll put one more right about there. So if I hold down the Z button and go back to solid view, you can see we've added a few support beams. You can add more of them if you want to, or you could make them like even and have one on each corner, but I'm just going to do something like that. And I do want to make sure that these beams aren't going through that pipe there. So I'll go back to object mode, and I also want to give this a material. So let's click here on the material drop down and I'll just choose the rough metal. So if I hold down the Z button, go up into the rendered view, that's looking pretty cool. And if I hit the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view, you can see now we have some cool support beams and they're going way down. All right, I will press control S to save the project and this will finish it up for the first part of the tutorial series. So in the second part, we are going to be doing all the animation and we'll use the rigid body physics and we'll animate the balls and we'll have them going down the pipes. And then we will render that out to images and then we'll compile it together into Blender's video editor and add the sound effects. So when the next part is released, it's gonna be right up there on the end screen and I'll also have the link in the description when it's released. And also if you'd like to purchase the finished project file of this tutorial. You can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. So thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying this so far and I will see you in part two.